Then number 13 promise, man can't do it. There's no way I could have done it myself. I would have been on a park bench. I mean, there's no way. The number 13 promise brings new life. I just see, I just see myself as a new lifer. Do they have lifers in jail? I'm a new lifer right now. And, and my my roommate, my girlfriend here that has this condo was saying that she would bet. <laughs> we were sitting here talking. And she says, I would bet you have grown spiritually to a level over the last five years that you have never, you have not ever encountered. You were never this way. That's that for sure. That is for sure. Okay. It's a new life. And then there's a new life coming for me. It's new. And the Lord said, this is, this is what's going to happen to you. And this is what I'm going to do. And it's a new life coming. Then, number 13, promise. There's a time between when it's given and then when it's manifest. So, it's a long wait. That's why I call it the wait number. But in the number 13 time, the blessings are about to be poured out. Because the Isaac came after 13 years of waiting. Remember, Ishmael was 13. When he threw him out. Well, you know, the story. Anyway, because the wait is so long, man tries to do it himself. Just because, you know, after a while, you're like, how long is this going to be? You know, like when I had my toothache, I was like, oh, no, I'm getting me a job. i got to get some insurance. i got to go to the dentist. This pain is, I cannot stand this pain. Things happen. You know, Isaac and Sarah were like, oh, come on. We know God is able. We know he can cause me to have a baby even though I'm, I, I'm past menopause. But this is taking, this is getting to be past menopause, past, past, past menopause. And it's just getting to be ridiculous. And, all, you know, think if she had doctors and physician ideas, or, you know, a, a woman past this age shouldn't even have a baby come out through that way. <laughs> I'm sure they were logically thinking it through. But God is not logical like you and me. So, you tend to want to do something. Hurry up and make that book come out. I know. God says wait. And you have friends that say, well, don't wait too long. Don't wait too long. Well, well, you know, the Holy Spirit had dealt with me about this, about this book, a wonderful book that I'm, I'm bringing. I love my book, Faith Journey Now Memoir. The book, you know, about this journey I'm on. And I love this book. And I'm coming to love the book more. And the Lord had said, I want you to really love this book. And I'm like, yeah, I love it. He said, ah, oh, I want you to really love this book. So you can really talk about this book. And people will really, really want to read the book. So, and it's not about money or making money or having a book or being an author. I've been that already. It's about, and I've made money already. I've had stuff. You all know about that. So, it's not that. It's about the work, the word of the Lord in the book. And how it's going to help people on their faith journey. People are about to go on a faith journey, have been on a faith journey, are resentful. They've already passed out of the wilderness, but they still are a little pissed with God for what they lost. You know? And it's just going to be such a great book. And I just love it. And I love the stories. You know, all the, all the chapters. I love them. They're, it's just coming together now. I'm working on Create Space and how to try to read the rules so that I put it in and not have too much fury about having it sent back and forth between me and them. But it's, you know, a little, you know, little things happen in my flesh. Like, mm, I'm taking too long to finish this thing. It's done. I don't know why you just don't put it out there. The Holy Spirit said it could be done. And I could say wait. And it's a practice to see if you'll obey me or obey a word of the Lord that comes to you through someone or a prophetic utterance or uh Something you read in the, in the email. You don't know how come they knew your email and they sent you a word and they said, put the book out today. The Lord said, you listen to me. 
You listen to me. I was in this wonderful fellowship the other day. Um, Matt Forger was speaking, and, and he finished, and he was walking around the room, and the Lord, the Lord was giving the word to people around the room, and people were falling out on the floor. You know how it's all for sight. You, know, you expect to see a glory cloud and some white flakes fall out of the sky any minute. It was charged. It was fun. I was having a good time. And I was looking over, I was like, wow, she getting the word from the Lord. Oh, he getting the word from the Lord. Oh, he getting the Lord. And I was all oh, looking over there, and I just heard the Holy Spirit say to me right next to me, Jesus said, I'm right here. <laughs> I turned. It was so real. I turned to my left. I went, oh, I'm, I'm the great excitement, and I'm, I'm standing right here next to you watching it. I'm like, okay. And I imaginarily put my hand in his hand. I actually do these things. And he, he put my, we, we held hands and watched. Like Rory, my girlfriend, who was there with me, said, oh, you had a box seat with the king? I said, yes. It was so exciting. The whole thing was exciting for me. You know, I had some issues with it, but, you know, some things that were happening, but or said, but uh, that's another vlog. And maybe you all need to hear it so that you can be a little bit more sensitive to African people that you go to missions with and, and Indian people. Be a little more sensitive to how you talk about them when you get back home. I know you need money because they have to, they have to be look as poverty stricken and as sad with no showers as possible. So white people give you more money, but, you know, watch that. But anyway. The Lord says, I'm the one that's here. I'm the one that you're to listen to. But you try to make your own thing. You're like, I'm not trying to do an Ishmael. I just believe the Lord's saying I should hurry up. Or I should have the book out by my birthday on March 9th. Who said it? Did the Holy Spirit tell you that? You know? So, this is the number 13 promise. It causes people to try to do it on their own. Another thing about the number 13 promise is it has season when it has a season when God does it in spite of the man or woman trying to produce on their own. So it's a specific type of a specific way that this number 13 a blessing promise has a journey, has its process. It takes it might not be 13 years, maybe Joseph had so many more years. Um it may be four years. It, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, it is a time when you're like, oh, God, when is this coming? I can't, I can't, I can't live off people one more minute. I can't gotta have my own place. I can't stand it. Lord, oh, can I have my own kitchen? Oh, please. You get really frustrated and you try to do something. But this promise, the is a, is a, is a number 13 promise, is one in which even if you act like that, even if you act like that, God will still bring the promise to pass. Let me stop my cat. Izzy, stop that noise. See, I'm getting really excited on the video and I'm talking really excited. So she thinks it's time. Oh, it must be a happy time for food because look at how happy Auntie Cow is. I know I, I call myself Auntie Carol for the cat. Yes, I do. Problem with that? I know you better stop that noise. Jingling that bell. I keep scratching. A convenient moment. <laughs> Whatever. So God will con con go ahead and do it for you anyway. Even though you've been having a horrible, horrible tantrum for a couple of months. You know who you are. And you've been sulking. You know who I'm talking about. You know, and you've been doing things you shouldn't do. The Lord told me recently, stop striving. It's it just, it just been coming day after day after day after day for a while. I mean, I think I haven't heard it for a couple of days. No, so I guess I'm calming down. Calm down. Stop striving. Be quiet. Rest. He said be quiet like four days in a row. I was like, when you say be quiet, do you mean shut up and not say anything and not just shut up? He said shut up your mouth and shut up your flesh. And shut yourself down. Ouch. I must be, he hasn't said it for a couple of days, so I guess I'm, I guess I'm calming down. He says, you know, add insult to injury. That was his word. You're calm, you're happy, be worse. Be more calm and more happy. It makes people really pissed. 
how can she live like that? Living with other people, having them take care of her, and she not having any money, and not contributing anything. Oh dear, I. Okay. I'm back again. Anyway, I think I stopped because it looked like towards the end, uh, the film was skipping. But whatever it is. I've had my lunch. Fully, fully revived. And uh, Boehner won. I'm still watching the TV. Of course, Boehner won. And um, he's speaking. And of course, he's crying. He's crying. You know, a crybaby. Never know the man. Outside of my own brother. I don't cry this much. It's so emotional. I love it, of course. Which woman wouldn't? I simply love it. But he's, anyway, he's getting himself together so he can talk. So, anyway, to wrap this up, um, the number 13. I will tell you this. Just after uh, that last segment, those who, God, <laughs> those who, are telling me to hurry up and get the book out, don't stop telling me that. I, I don't mean to discourage you from pushing me ahead. He it, Just keep telling me, where's that book? And 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 whenever the Holy Spirit gives you utterance, just say stuff to me. I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not talking to my girlfriends, my particular girlfriend. Who know, you know who you are, Rory and Vonda uh, and Marie. Don't stop encouraging me. I'm just saying for everyone, you know, we just have times where we're pressured and we're pressuring ourselves when the Holy Spirit is not pressuring us, which can lead to issues. You all know what I mean, those particular women, but, you know, I just love you so much and I don't want you to think, I'm like, mm -hmm, stop telling her. Though, you're not the type of women to do that anyway. <laughs> so, you know what I'm worried about, but. Number 13 promise. We had just talked about um, the number 13 being this, representing the season when number 13 promise representing the season when God does it in spite of you trying to do it on your own and producing an Ishmael and because because you tried to produce an Ishmael you got a mess but God still comes through for you and he does what he said he was going to do so I have had uncountable I can't even count them times of trying to look for a job, going for a job interview, bless my soul, how dare I, when God told me no. But I, you just think it's so crazy and so ridiculous, and how can this work? This can't work for it. So I have been to so many, um, I have been through so many stages where I am trying to obey the Lord and not look for a job and not get a job or not try to make money. You know, do someone's hair and they'll give me money. You know, there's a girl who asked me to do her hair. And we, I said, okay, let's go get to get hair and braid her hair, braid her hair for her. But the Holy Spirit said, don't take any money. I said, okay, well, well. But she said, he said that, but I can bless you, can't I? And I was like, ooh. She blesses good too. And she blesses, she don't just give you no $20. She, this is the really blessing. So I have, I had a time where I was like, oh, come on, come on, come on, let me, I have no cash. Come on, girl, let me get your hair braided so I know I'm up to bless. She still hasn't done it. And now I'm talking to you guys, I realize the Holy Spirit was like, because you were looking for the tip. But you knew what we did. Because she knows your situation and she, she admires you. So one day I was over at another friend's house and she needed her hair braided. I said, sit down, let me braid your hair. Of course. It's wonderful. It's like that. Lord said, that's what I want. That kind. That kind of faith. It's hard when you... Un I can see it. Under this number 13, the number 13 kind of promise. It's hard. But you can do it. I'm doing it. I'm still living off my girlfriend, Carol. I'm still living in her condo. 
which we call our home. And the cats are cats. And we're anointed to stay together. No issues. Wonderful friendship, fellowship. God's doing it. It's sometimes it's hard not to have your own, but it's I can't even call it hard anymore. It's almost like not hard. It's almost like cheating. <laughs> I'm cheating. I'm anointed. So I was like, how can you do it? Oh, girl, I'm a strong woman. <laughs> no, I'm anointed. Favor ain't fair. You heard that before from me. Favor is not fair. You'll be so mad when you see somebody with favor because you'll be like, I tried to do that and I couldn't do that. You know? But God will do it for you. Still bring out your Isaac. Because when you repent, he forgives. He'll still bring out your Isaac even though you had an Ishmael. Number 13, the number 13 promise also brings desperation for the promise to manifest. So there are times I sit here in this room and I'm like, Lord, forgive me, I'm sorry. Was I complaining? Was I whining? I didn't mean to. I, I can wait, Lord, as long as you say until I get my own place. I know you said I'm going to have this gorgeous condo and I'm going to have this fabulous car. I can wait. I can wait. I'm sorry if I was acting whiny. Let, please forgive. And the Holy Spirit says, No, that's okay. I want you to want it. I want you to want it back. I want you to look for it. Day and night. Expecting it. Although with joy. And with great anticipation. So it's okay. To be feeling like, oh, I can't wait till it comes. That wonderful husband God has for me. I don't know what he looks like. God hasn't told me who it is, but I can imagine his wonderful face. I don't care what he really looks like to the rest of the world. To me, he's going to look wonderful. His wonderful face. His loving eyes looking at me like, oh, it was worth all I suffered. To finally meet this woman of God, this wife that God had planned for me before the foundations of the earth. It's okay to daydream about the wonderful car. The other day, you know, another friend said something about, you should have a car by now. It was said in such a way I could have been offended, but the Holy Spirit was like, I, like her mouth said it and it was like, it was God. And I was like, yes. I should, so it was like the Lord sort of waking me up, so I told another girlfriend who's a little bit more calm, and she said, oh, let's decree that, Lord, she started decreeing it, Lord, we decree in the name of Jesus, a car for my sister, she says, oh, oh, I see it, brand new, hallelujah, I smell new car smell, she's saying, you know, in faith, I smell new car smell, oh, I smell fresh leather, oh, it smells good, I said, go ahead, Roar. it was Rory. You know, my girl, Rory. I mean, she was like getting into it, and I was adding on, amen. Bonner's crying again. <laughs> Can't help himself. He's got his napkin, he's blowing his nose. Oh, Lord. That's the man of the house. Okay. Bless him, Lord. Bless him in the name of Jesus. Pull your whole mighty spirit over him. You know, help him. Help him so he cries with the whole speech. You know, because in spite of everything he's gone through, you know, he's, either they love him and they poured love on him. And, you know, Nancy is a lady. So she, you know, she just told, you know, say how wonderful he is and how we love him and all. That made him cry. Oh, people are hugging on each other. And, oh, my goodness. It's just getting really emotional there. Maybe breaking down the brain and pushing down into the heart, you think, in the house. America needs it so bad. Got to be done. I digress. Um, Rory is praying for my car. My new car. And it's okay to be excited about this car. It's, excited, it's, it's okay to be excited about this new place you're going to live. It's excited to think about because Rory gave me two chairs. I'm not going to turn this camera right now, but two little chairs, like miniature tiny chairs, and I put my, put my little plants on them. And... 
you know, Carol's always got stuff. She says, oh, this would be good in your new house. You want you want to get women to buy that for you? That you can put that in your new house. So you can knit a a, a a pillow in this design for your new house. You know, so she's excited with me. I'm excited. Get excited about the miracles God's about to do in your life. It helps encourage you. You know, sometimes when you get a word from the Lord, uh, this Matt Sorger guy was saying, and it's over and over. He says the same thing. Sometimes it's because you're hard headed, but other times it's because you need to keep hearing that the Lord is still saying these things and that he's really going to bring these things to pass. And you, you needn't worry, you know, because he has promised. And even though it looks long, 13, 14 years, more years, 17 years on your 25th year, still waiting. And I know a woman who's 70-something. She said, Lord told me I'm going to get married. You don't see me looking worried about it. He's coming. I might be 77, but he's coming. Is that faith or what? And God's going to reward that kind of thing. But you, 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 want, you want to have a form of desperation. You, you want to be somewhat desperate for what God has to do. It's exciting. Get excited about what's about to occur. The number 13, another number 13 promise, the sign of it is this promise is given in unfavorable circumstances. Though in time, the circumstances themselves give away to birth the promise. As soon as I read it, I remember a word the Lord brought me in my quiet time with Him. If you press through, the mounting tension. You will see your breakthrough on the other side. You know, and for me, those of you who know my life, you know, every once in a while, a family member, because who cares what anybody else thinks? You know, your mother's life gets you crazy. It, it's just sort of, um, do you have any money? I mean, are you getting, are you getting a check? Is there anything, I mean, how? Uh -huh. You know, they look, they give you that look. Carol, you're about to be 57. Uh, you're not going to have a pension. Uh, you might need help with you. I mean, they have this look, and you're looking at the look. Did you see Christ in that look I just had? He's not there. Like one musician that met me said, Yeah, they're worried about you. He said, but who has the greatest, biggest smile? I said, me. He said, yeah. Me too. His mother's crying because he's an engineer, but he's but he's a musician full time. His wife don't mind. She's happy. Go ahead, do what you want to do. And then she's a nurse and he's a musician. You know, he gets a gig, he gets a gig. But the mother's pleased him every day. Like, how are you, how are you folks to be You look sad and I'm happy. You know, get a grip on your walk. And don't give up. God's doing it. He's working behind the scenes. And he says this word to you. Calm down. Settle down. If you were offensive before, because you were living, relaxed, in an adverse circumstance, it appears you created because you decided to do what you thought you heard God say. And it's just going on for a long time and you're just living in it. And family members and friends are calling you out of your mind and your pastor's not on your side. The Holy Spirit says, add insult to injury. Be even happier. It's 2013, the year of the blessings. Blessings are coming on you. Blessings are coming on you. What else can you ask for? Nothing. <laughs>